Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a chapter that is related to chapter 25. It's really just kind of a mention in the chapter, but we're going to deal with it a little more extensively so that we get to our last week together, our very depressing last week, which is also a really wonderful last week, except I miss you all. Okay, our section, if you can't remember what we did last time, was the reproductive system. This time is going to be related to fetal development, and this is fetal development part one. Okay, a very true quote that fewer women would have abortions if wombs had windows. That is by Dr. Bernard Nathanson which used to be an abortionist and then turned a pro-life activist. This is a real picture of a real baby before they are born. Uh, it is an actual statement in that if a woman actually sees the ultrasound before she goes in to have an abortion, the majority of women will not have abortions. Because although the law says that they have to have an ultrasound, they don't have to be shown the ultrasound of their baby. So they don't see what their baby is actually like. And they believe the lies that their baby is just a lump of tissue. Okay, we are going to start right where we left off. And this picture should look vaguely familiar, if not exactly the same. Okay, you can see up on the top left that this process is implantation. Uh, it takes a little while to get there, but you also can see in the top left a photograph of the relative size of a sperm cell versus an egg cell. And you can see that there's a significant difference in size. Okay, so first we're going to begin right here with ovulation, which process that you should know about, where the oocyte, the egg cell, is released. Then you have these little guys here, the sperm. One actually enters the cell. You can see it right there if you look carefully, and that is fertilization. Now remember, what's kind of strange is Right before the two combine, you have the last part of oogenesis where the cell division happens and that last polar body is formed. Then the two nuclei combine. You have the two nuclei and you have a zygote and you're right here where the, you have a single nucleus. And that, by the way, all takes place within one day. Now, you might realize that this takes a little bit longer than you might think, okay? Because it hasn't even made it to the uterus yet. Also notice that fertilization happens in the upper part of the fallopian tubes. Lots of people think it happens down in the uterus, but it doesn't. It happens up in the fallopian tubes. Now, remember this oocyte is traveling by cilia, in the fallopian tube, just kind of gently moving it along. Okay, sometime between day one and day two, the cell will start dividing and baby will start growing. Okay, it divides, it divides, it divides, it keeps on dividing and you have a ball of cells. And by day four, you have what is called a morula. I know it sounds like something possibly out of a sci-fi movie, but that is the name of the ball of cells, is the morula. And it takes f four days since ovulation to reach that point. Uh, in day five, you now have what is known as a blastocyst. Blast, I hope you remember, means related to building. Okay, a cyst think about like a bubble. And what you can see the difference between day four and day five is that it's starting to separate out into these layers. And we will talk about those layers in a little bit. Okay? 
So it's forming a cyst, a blastocyst, a bubble that is going to build. Okay, day se six and seven, it becomes even more defined. You can see that the layers are starting to separate out. And by day eight, nine, you have very specific layers and you actually have implantation of the blastocyst. And you can see you have what is called the epiblast and the hypoblast. And hopefully you remember epi means on and hypo means below. And you can see that it's going into the endometrium, the lining of the uterus at this point. Okay, so it takes a full nine days after ovulation for the, there to be implantation. And if anything happens along the way and implantation's not all perfectly lined up, there will not be a pregnancy. And you can see what has to happen is this part of the blastocyst actually has to be what connects to the endometrium. Okay, if the other side is what touches the endometrium, implantation will not happen. Okay, so let's get a close up on our little friend there. Okay, do not freak out. You do not need to know every little bit of this. This is the process of gastrulation, which basically just means it's the process where it's folding in on itself and it's going to be causing these different layers. Now, you have the uh, hypoblast, which is this part here, the big part, and you have the epiblast, which is this small part. Okay, what ends up happening is the epiblast, right in here, you can see it starts folding in. Okay, this is what's called a notochord, and if you looked at a photograph of this, you would see a line. That notochord is what is going to eventually become the uh, part of the spinal cord. Okay, and it's folding in, and you can see in the next picture, it folds even more in, if that makes sense. More inward? Okay. Um, now... What you can finally see by this point, if you look at these two, is you have it folded over like this. So now you actually have kind of, if you will, like a taco shell shape. And you have the ectoderm, which is the outer part, the endoderm, which is the inner part, and the mesoderm, which is the part in the middle. This big ball here, which was part of the blastocyst, is the blastocele. Seal, remember, meaning space. Okay, the blastocele has the food to feed the cells. This part right here that we're looking at, that just is kind of folding in on itself, the ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, this is actually the part that is going to become the embryo. Okay, now if you look up at the top, it kind of makes sense. Ecto is the outside. Derm, skin, although there's not really skin at this point. The ectoderm is going to become skin, hair, nose and mouth, and the nervous system. Okay, so things like your brain and your spinal cord. It makes sense because they are on the outside. The mesoderm, the middle, I don't know why they have them in this order, is going to be the muscles and skeleton, okay, the main parts of your body in the middle. The endoderm is what's basically going to be your guts, endo, inside, digestive tract, respiratory tract, liver, pancreas, all those pieces and parts, okay, so they're changing into those different parts. Now realize this is happening by nine days after ovulation. By the way, you're not even officially pregnant yet and yet baby has started to form. Okay, now 
surrounding this that they don't show in this picture is what is called the tro uh, the trophoblast and the embryoblast. Okay, don't worry about all of these weird names over here. They're just more names for the same thing. The embryoblast, that ball of cells that we were talking about. Uh, this is kind of a step back because it's not completely a blastocyst, or a blastocyst yet. But the embryoblast is where the embryo is going to be. The trophoblast is this outer layer. Okay, now troph or trough, depending on the word, if you'll remember, has to do with feeding. Now, the trophoblast is not feeding the embryo. Remember that in this blastocele in here, there's going to be fluid that feeds the eggs and it keeps it alive. Okay, but what happens is you can see that that trophoblast, once it touches the endometrium, it actually releases digestive enzymes and starts to burrow into the endometrium. This is part of the process of implantation where that cell is going to become embedded into the endometrium. And you can see in the next stage, it goes deeper and deeper in. And this is forming the epiblast and the hypoblast. Okay, the epiblast is where baby's going to be, right here. The hypoblast, this thing right here, is what is going to turn into the yolk sac right here and that will feed baby until baby is connected to mom. Okay, just like in an egg from a chicken, there is a yolk and that yolk feeds the baby until it can eat. This yolk is going to feed baby until it has the ability to eat from mommy. Okay, um, the germinal disc is basically, you can see just right here, germinal means to grow. You have the yolk sac, which is this area. Now, also pay attention to the amniotic cavity as we go through of all of this. Because the amniotic cavity is going to become something very, very important. Okay, we will continue next time. We've gotten through implantation. So baby's not going anywhere. Until next time.